Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our Telephone Town Hall me meeting. NFIB will be on this call for 30 minutes. We're going to be introducing Doug Ducey, uh, who has been endorsed uh, by this particular organization. We want you to ask him questions. That would be Doug Ducey. And if you have a question, if you have a question, please press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone. We want to try to get to every question every member has today if we can. Press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone if you have a question. Uh, I'm going to be on for just another 30 to 60 seconds, and then I'm going to introduce Farrell. He is our leader at the NFIB in this particular state, and we want you, again, to ask questions. Best way to do that is to press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone. Um, we're going to be on, like I said, for 30 minutes, and we are waiting for most of our members to get on the call. We've dialed out to about 40% of our membership thus far. Again, welcome, everybody. Welcome to our telephone town hall meeting. If you have a question for Doug, please press zero. That's zero on the keypad on your phone. Um, Farrell, why don't you take it away and uh, start the introductions. And in, in your conversation, if you wouldn't mind, please, please remind people to press zero to ask questions. Go ahead, please. Good morning, NFIB. Uh, this is Farrell Quinlan. I'm the State Director in Arizona for the National Federation of Independent Business. And we have about 7,000 members in this state, and it's great that you could join us this morning. And we'll hopefully have a quick uh, half hour or so with hopefully the next governor of the state of Arizona, Doug Ducey. And as you've probably seen uh, in last uh, week's uh, news, and if you watched that debate, uh, Doug Ducey was endorsed by uh, NFIB's Safe Trust uh, last week, and uh, he was uh, proud enough of that uh, distinction that he both opened and closed the debate uh, announcing that to the assembled folks in Chandler of the day, and uh, it's, it's great that uh, the candidate that we endorse uh, finds that our endorsement is so uh, uh, so special and, 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 and uh He's gratified for it that he makes it a centerpiece of his campaign. So uh, it is great to have him here, and hopefully when he is governor, we will have more of these telephone town halls. And if you'd like to ask a question, dial zero. Again, that's dial zero to get in queue to ask a question. So uh, with no further ado, we have uh, Doug Ducey for about a half hour, and uh, we'll kick it over to him to say some welcoming um, remarks, and then we'll get right to your questions, which you need to dial zero to get to. Good morning, Doug. Uh, thanks for joining us on our uh, telephone town hall today. Hey, thanks, Farrell. Thanks for hosting this, and thank you for having me. And again, thanks to your membership for the endorsement. Uh, I not only let off the debate with telling people that I've been endorsed by the National Federation of Independent Businesses, I've let off every presentation since you did it. I really... Uh, uh, I'm honored. Uh, the theme of my campaign is one of opportunity for all, uh, good jobs, and a chance to get ahead. And I believe it's small business that creates these jobs. I don't think government or politicians or governors create jobs. I think they create an environment in which businesses can grow, and that's where jobs uh, and fulfilling careers come from. So I'm going to continue to do that until you tell me to stop doing that. I hope that your membership knows a little bit about my background. I've spent 25 years of my adult life in the private sector, um, and uh, I'm most well known for being a small businessman. Uh, my company was Cold Stone Creamery, the ice cream concept. Uh, we started here in, in Arizona with a great product and grew it to 1,440 ice cream stores operating in all 50 states. We sold Cold Stone in 2007, and I'm very proud to say that it operates in over 25 countries around the world today. Uh, even as Cold Stone grew and became a national and international brand, I always had to think like a small businessman because we were only as good as the strength of our franchise community. And I know that when government passes one of its regulations that large corporations can always hire another lawyer or another lobbyist, but oftentimes that type of cost on a small business owner, a retailer, can put them out of business. And I want to bring that kind of posture and business-like thinking, fresh energy to the governor's office, and make sure that these agency heads and people that are there know who we serve and know what we're to support. And part of that is our small business community and our hardworking taxpayers. So uh, I'm very excited to be on the line. 
Uh, I certainly, with only half an hour available, don't want to spend all the time talking. I want to know what's on your members' minds, um, and I also want to uh, answer any questions they have. So, again, thanks so much for having me, Carl. Great. Well, we have a question from Yale in uh, Phoenix, I believe. Uh, Yale, are you on the line? I am. Good morning, Doug. This is Yale from Phoenix, and our law firm represents a number of small businesses, many who have been doing business here for a number of years, some who have just been doing business here, and there's a surprisingly high incidence of Department of Economic Security audits where the department is taking the position that workers who have been treated as independent contractors for many years are being recharacterized, kind of a knee-jerk reaction. And some of our clients have actually said they're going to stop doing business in Arizona, and it seems to me this is exactly the type of situation you're going to try and deal with, and that is um, you know, just um, a somewhat overhanded approach to things and the need to hire attorneys when these small businesses, that's the last thing in the world they need. So uh, coincidentally, we have worked with the NFIB and look forward to doing that in the future. So I'm curious as to what suggestions you have for dealing with this if, uh, when you become governor. Yeah, well, thanks for the question. And this is exactly the kind of thing that I see in government with this overreach and this intoxication by bureaucrats of the power that they have to change the rules uh, and change the language to get in the way of the growth of, of small business and, and burden them. So whenever there's this opportunity at the state level, I'm going to stop it. I mean, on day one, I'm going to put a moratorium on any new regulation from state agencies. Uh, and I want to battle back against the federal government in every place we can do it. Uh, and I, I've seen how many of these so-called protections that are passed by legislators or written by agencies end up being a true burden uh, on, on the small business owner, adding cost and, uh, and legal expense. So whenever someone can point out something at the state level that can be fixed or reversed or uh, where we can collapse so there's not duplication or, or replication of, of, um, of multiple agencies, I'll, I'll take care of that immediately. Uh, and I know, uh, as, uh, as many small business owners are aware, the, the fuzzy language that is written from uh, departments of revenue and IRS are such a burden. So I want to make things as, as clear uh, and, and simple and predictable and consistent as is possible. My experience is everyone, or almost everyone, wants to comply with the law. Uh, but let's make sure that the law is, is understandable and uh, people can predict what's going to happen as long as they play by the rules. Then they can affect their bottom line and try to sell more products so they can pay everyone else, the landlord, the employees, the vendors, the investors, uh, and hopefully something will be left over for them, which is what, what we call a profit and has been uh, demonized by, by so many that don't understand how it works. Well, this is one place where the word profit's not going to be demonized. Uh, thanks for your question there, Yale. Hey, uh, we have a, uh, a, a feature on this call where if you press a button, you'll have a vote. So, you know, we'd like to give our uh, participants an opportunity to have some interactive feedback. And the question uh, we're asking you is, which of the three major categories of taxes do you find most burdensome as a small business owner? And there are three choices. It's the three-legged stool. Press one for property taxes two for sales taxes, or three for income taxes. So which of those three taxes are the most burdensome and you'd like to see the next governor um, address? Number one is property taxes, number two, sales taxes, and number three, income taxes. And Doug, uh, Loretta from Chandler uh, would like to know about uh, the where you stand on raising the minimum wage. Uh, people haven't really been talking about it and uh, would like to see what, uh, what you think there's any change that we could do here in Arizona on that front. Well, well, sure. I mean, nobody wants a minimum wage job. Uh, I think everyone wants to work uh, towards something that builds a fulfilling career. Uh, and that's what I'd like to see through a rising economic tide, is the ability to, to enhance everyone's paycheck as our economy grows and prosperity spreads. And that's going to be the theme of so many of the things that I'm going to do in terms of economic development and job creation and making Arizona a more attractive state for companies to relocate. But I think much of this discussion around uh, the minimum wage doesn't address those issues. 
I think the first thing I'd say on the minimum wage is, uh, what, what, is there a discussion around a teenage minimum wage? I've got a son who's worked at a minimum wage job making $7.90 an hour. I think if the minimum wage were to more than double, uh, he and many other teenagers would immediately be out of work. And then I think the thing that I look to for guidance on this, because it is so important to me that we have job creation and more Arizonans working, is the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office said that if the minimum wage were to be moved to $15 an hour, up to 500,000 jobs could be lost across this country. So as someone that wants to see more jobs, not less jobs, and wants to see people be in a position where wages are rising, uh, I, I'm opposed to raising that, that minimum wage. Yeah, Doug, uh, it's, uh, in Arizona, as you know, back in '06, we had a minimum wage uh, ballot proposition which sort of put it on uh, automatic increases uh, to the uh, CPI, the Consumer Price Index. So Arizona, the voters uh, already raised it and, and we're, we're sort of tagged to the, the federal level. So it'll be interesting to see how that is played out um, in Washington and that may, may affect Arizona. Why don't we move on to a uh, the question that we had to the to the viewer to the viewers to the uh, participants uh, it looks like income taxes are the uh, most burdensome taxes uh, 41 percent of our respondents uh, picked income taxes as the most burdensome and interestingly enough uh, sales taxes came in second at 32 percent with property taxes at 27 percent as most burdensome does that uh, surprise you at all that income taxes are the are the top concern of small business owners Doug no, not, not at all, especially because I imagine many uh, business owners are, are pass-through type companies. And one thing that I've said is uh, I'd like to see the, uh, the income tax reduced with the goal of driving it as close to zero as possible. Something I've done here, Farrell, is look at other companies, oh, I should say companies, other states that do things better than the state of Arizona. You know, that was one thing we did when we were building Cold Stone. We looked at other successful franchise brands and said, you know, what, what can we learn from them? We learned a lot from McDonald's on the franchise model, a lot from Subway on how to make uh, the unit economics in 1,200 square feet work, and we learned a lot from Starbucks as to how to build a brand with no advertising uh, or marketing dollars. And I've done the same thing as I've thought of being governor. What states can we learn something from? And I think Arizona can learn something from the nine states that have no income tax. They're outperforming us in many ways. They're more attractive economies and attractive to our business owners as they make a decision where to locate. So I want to start by thinking about, I, I want the callers to, to imagine an, an Arizona where local companies are expanding, but where companies that are out of state of Arizona look to Arizona as the perfect place in which to do business. And to me, that's a lower, flatter, fairer tax code that's a whole lot easier to deal with. And the, uh, the real goal, although it'll take a term or two as governor to get there, is to have a zero income tax. Well, that's great uh, to hear. Um, hopefully we can get to that. Uh, as a reminder, if you want to ask a question, uh, press zero, and you'll be uh, – uh, put into queue. We've got calls from Phoenix, from Yuma, from St. John's. This is a great uh, tool to talk to everyone across the state. Um, not many Arizonans realize how important your job as state treasurer is. How, uh, how has your leadership in that position uh, benefited the typical taxpayer? You know, it's amazing to me, Farrell. Uh, the state treasurer is the state's responsible banker and chief investment officer. Uh, we manage $12.5 billion of taxpayer assets. It's almost unbelievable that we let a elected person do this. The only qualification you need is to be 25 years old and have lived in the state for five years. Thankfully, I do have a finance degree, and I have managed a, a budget of my own before I came into office. And we've done a number of things that I think are going to put the state in a better position and more business friendly. Uh, most important is, with the help of the NFIB, we defeated Proposition 204, Prop 204 was a $1 billion permanent sales tax increase. 
It would have made the state of Arizona the second highest sales tax state in the nation, and I think thrown a wet blanket our, on our economy forevermore and made it impossible to reform our tax code or improve K-12 education. So we were able to stop that. We were also able to pass a small reform called Proposition 118, which put more money into K-12 education without raising taxes and without any additional general fund spending. So basically, it was just a business-like approach to the functions of government, looking to see what was core and necessary to better serve our citizens and hardworking taxpayers and make those improvements in the treasurer's office. But I'll tell you where the action is, is in the governor's office. That's where you can affect everything across the spectrum in a state. And I think those of us that are calling in from Arizona know what a wonderful place we have to live and work, play, recreate, retire, visit, and in many places get an education. So it's time to grow again. It's time to kickstart our economy and let everyone know that our state does stand for that one single idea of opportunity for all. That's great. Um, remember, if you want to ask a question to Doug Ducey, uh, please press zero. And I think now we are um, looking to go to Chuck in Yuma, who may have a question on transportation. Hello. Chuck, are you on? Um, yes. In Yuma, there was a lot of construction going on. In in the past, there was more construction, and the, the, then the snowboards could not get into my business, and it really killed the season. It's a, Yuma is kind of a seasonal business. As governor, would you be able to get that taken care of so that they would start working on the roads in the when the snowboards leave instead of waiting until like September to start the road, the road construction? Yes, Chuck, a great question. This comes up on infrastructure all over the state. Uh, I want you to know that I'm getting out all across the state. I'm running to be governor of all the people. I realize we have 15 counties in this state, and good ideas come from more than just one county. Uh, and this is something that I've heard in Yuma, uh, and I was in, uh, in, in Pima County last night, and I, I heard it. Uh, so this is a, the management of a, a proper management or business-like management of a budget. There's been over $750 million swept from our HERF funds, our Highway User Revenue Funds, over the past 12 years. That's the first thing that I want to stop in the Ducey administration. These are our taxes that are paid at the pump to go to service and care for our roads and bridges and infrastructure. So much of what you see when you get out across the state is the, the lack of maintenance and the neglect. So we'll be able to deal with that. And I'll tell you, it's a winning issue because it creates jobs, and these roads are the, the backbone of our economic infrastructure. It's how we move goods and services, and it's something we'll tend to in the Ducey administration. You can count on it, Chuck. Well, um, it looks like... Uh, we have a question that came in earlier today uh, on email, somebody who couldn't join us. Um, the term economic development is, uh, can mean many different things depending on who you ask. Drilling down to specifics, how will you create a better business climate so more companies want to relocate or expand in Arizona? And we are a place where startups uh, will be uh, launched by entrepreneurs. Thanks, Farrell, and it's a great question, and I think it's a critical one to ask because you're right, economic development can mean many different things to many different people and, and leaders. So I would go back to that, that vision of an Arizona where our, first and foremost, our existing businesses are expanding, and then out-of-state companies and decision-makers look to Arizona as the best possible place in which to do business. So I believe that begins with our tax code. I think our tax code should start with an idea that it looks like somebody actually wrote it on purpose. I think uh, that's the first start to growing a healthy uh, economy that, that serves our hardworking Arizonans. I think our tax code is far too complex. I want to make it more simple, flatter, fairer, and I want to make it a whole lot easier to, to deal with at, at the end of a, of a budgetary year. My philosophy is it's your money, you earned it, 
and I want a tax code that incents you to keep more of it. So uh, th that's where we're going to start. Also, the regulatory environment. Uh, regu regulation is a hidden tax and burden on the small business owner. That's why I'm going to put a moratorium on it on day one. And then I want to look at common sense reforms that lower liability and litigation on, on the small business owner and the taxpayer. So th that's what makes the environment for the best possible place in which to do business. Then we need a spokesperson who can project that out. I'm not going to delegate that to these economic development agencies. As governor, I'm going to embrace that message, and I'm going to be the spokesperson. I'm going to be the one making personal phone calls and showing up in L.A. County and, and uh, Chicago to pitch these business owners on what their life looks like moving their company to Arizona. And it's not going to be special deals and favors. It's going to be a consistent, reliable, predictable environment in which to do business over the next four and hopefully eight years. And lastly, we're going to pay attention to our education system. I want our kids to be graduating and walking across that aisle in cap and gown with real skills to know how to read and to communicate and analyze so that if they want to go into the working world, they're employable and trainable on job one. And if they want to go out and get more education, go to college, go to tech school, they go there and they don't have to go back and learn the things that they should have been learning the past 12 years. That's what economic development means to me, and that's what I'll bring to life in the Ducey administration. You are listening to NFIB's Telephone Town Hall with Congressional Candidate Doug Ducey. This is Farrell Quinlan of NFIB. If you'd like to ask a question of our, hopefully our next governor, uh, dial zero. Um, we do have another poll question that the participants hopefully will uh, help us out with. Uh, what is the single biggest concern you have as a small business today? Um, and the answers are, one is taxes, two are insurance, uh, excuse me, two is health insurance cost, three is regulations, four, economic uncertainty, or five, finding qualified workers. So let me uh, repeat. What is the single biggest concern you have for your small business today? And if you were to press a button on your phone, one, for taxes, two, for health care insurance costs, three, for regulations, four, for economic uncertainty, and five, for finding qualified uh, workers. Um, so dial zero if you'd like to ask a question. And uh, maybe uh, while you're all voting in that online uh, poll, uh, maybe Doug can answer, what do you think are some of the best qualities Arizona presents uh, for some of these companies who want to start here or, or expand or relocate? Well, I think some of our best qualities are probably uh, why we all, all live here, and, uh, and, and many of us came here from other places. This is a very welcoming place. Uh, it's a place where uh, it's, it's easy to meet new people. It's easy to break in. At least personally, I found that there isn't uh, an established order or a good old boys club. I think that work is rewarded here, and because people did come from other places, uh, it's easy to make uh, to build a network and to to make uh, the, the right connections you need in terms of how to navigate the entrepreneurial landscape. I I wish we had more large employers here, and I think uh, it's something that I'd like to to grow. Uh, over the course of time, but often that's from from startup companies that, that grow and, and, and have success. So I think the idea of this being a very entrepreneurial place, this is, uh, while we have lots of room for improvement, this is a place that's welcoming to the small business owner. It's become less so recently, uh, but I, I do think it's a, it's a place that's, that's wide open, both in our urban areas and our, our rural areas. And I can say this as someone who built ice cream stores across the state and across the country. I did notice the difference in building ice cream stores in Arizona versus in California or in New York or New Jersey. So I really think I saw what uh, the wrong direction looks like. What I want to do is keep this of a, more of a free marketplace that embraces those principles and helps people understand why we're going to have policies that support those principles Rather than there's kind of that consistent popular drumbeat of, hey, Doug, why weren't you part of the uh, group that went out and paid, you know, $1.3 billion 
to bring some already highly successful company to our state. Uh, of course, we're going to compete to bring available opportunities to the state of Arizona. But I'm not going to get into this race to the bottom in terms of negotiation. I know that business that's won on price will be lost on price, and it's the same with businesses that are won on incentives. The best thing that I can do as governor, Farrell, is to take care of the 100,000-plus businesses that already exist in the state of Arizona and have an environment where they can grow and where they can add workers and where they can be more prosperous. That will make us a more attractive state to have people coming to the state of Arizona, and uh, that's going to be the agenda that I move forward with. Well, I think we hit a, uh, a vein of, uh, of, of concern out there. I think the poll question uh, clearly shows that regulations coming in at 34% is the biggest concern that businesses have today. And, and uh, we had a spike in people calling in, uh, trying to ask questions about regulations. You know, Mary Jean in Phoenix, Tim in St. John's, uh, Jane in Tempe, Todd in Buckeye, and then Michael in unknown Arizona. Uh, we've got a, a number of questions coming in, and we don't quite have time for everyone to get on the line and, and thank everyone for calling in. Uh, regulations, uh, what is the red tape and the bureaucratic uh, mess that a lot of businesses have to deal with. Uh, as governor, what can you do? You know, perhaps it's putting more uh, business people into positions of, of decision-making in state government. Uh, what are some of the, the specific strategies you're going to employ as our next governor to make sure the regulatory environment in the state is not uh, hampering small business? Well, uh, Farrell, step one is going to be that moratorium, that executive order on day one that puts a moratorium on any new regulations. Uh, and I think that's important, but what I think is probably even more important than that is step two, which is bringing together a group of leaders and business owners. And Farrell, I'll ask you and some of the leaders of NFIB to participate in this as to what regulations can be rolled back, what's unnecessary. What's not needed? Uh, that's so much of what I want to fix is not only what's happened going forward, but on, on regulations, these are things that governor can affect right now going backwards. I, just, I want to make sure I can look into a microphone and a tele, uh, television camera and be able to say to, uh, to uh, all Arizona families that we're going to have a great place to live with a premium on public safety uh, in everything that we do. And... Let's let our business owners uh, grow and prosper. Let's get help wanted signs out there so people can fill jobs, turn into fulfilling careers. So I'm going to need the help of today's uh, small business owner, today's independent business uh, owner, who can say mm -hmm. this is unnecessary, this is not needed, this is a rep replication and, and duplication. And I want to get rid of that. And uh, so it's not just improving things going forward. It's what can we undo that has hurt the business environment and the free market uh, over the last uh, couple decades that can be improved. Well, Doug, this has been great. I'll, I'll let you uh, wrap up here in a second, but I just wanted to remind everybody, you've been listening to the NFIB Telephone Town Hall with Doug Ducey. And uh, Doug's website for more information, and you can get uh, uh, ask him questions on his website, is uh, DougDucey.com. And if you need to know how to uh, get registered to vote or get an early uh, ballot, you can go to NFIB.com slash smallbizvoter. Smallbiz is B-I-Z, voter. And uh, thanks, Doug. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing this many times when you're actually sitting in on the ninth floor of the executive tower. Uh, but uh, before that, uh, I want to say uh, thanks and goodbye to our uh, small business members across the state. And uh, any wrapping up question, any wrapping up uh, comments before you have to go? You, you got it, Farrell, uh, for sure. First, I want to say thank you to you, and I want to say thank you to the members of the National Federation of Independent Businesses. I'm very proud to announce to everyone, everywhere I go, that I've been endorsed by you. And uh, I'll be honored to work with you going forward in a Ducey administration. And you can count on this type of access and communication because I don't think there's anyone better to help me understand how legislation will affect 
the economic prosperity of our state and to hear from, from your membership. I know what you want. I think you want government to get out of your way and allow you to run your businesses. And uh, that's how I felt at Coldstone Creamery, and that's the type of administration I want to bring to Arizona. This race is way too close for comfort. So if you like what you're hearing, I do need you to tell your friends and neighbors and clients and colleagues about this race. Um, if your employees want to understand why they should be voting for, for Doug Ducey, please send them to our website. And if they don't understand why they would be voting for a business uh, person and wh how that affects them as someone who's a, a member of a small business, uh, I just uh, say the Job Creators Network. If you Google Job Creators Network, they've got these great videos that help people understand why it's both an employer and employee's best interest to have someone in government that recognizes what allows economies to grow and prosperity to spread. Uh, thank you so much for having me on the line today, Farrell. Again, I'm honored by the NFIB's endorsement, and I'm going to communicate it with pride. DougDucey.com if you have more questions, and I know I'll see you out and about on the tra trail. Thanks, everybody, and have a great, great day. Well, this would be the time everyone would stand up and start clapping and uh, if we were in person. But uh, thanks a lot, Doug, for being with us. And we look forward to our members working with you um, as we try to get this economy kick-started again, as you'd like to say. Uh, again, thank you all for joining us for the NFIB uh, a Small Business uh, Teleforum with Doug Ducey, the next governor of Arizona. And again, uh, nfib.com slash smallbusinessvoter to find out some uh, issues uh, that we are following for the campaign on the federal level and on the state level, to register to vote, find your fo polling places, um, get an early ballot, and for just general news on NFIB uh, in Arizona, it's nfib.com slash az, and we will hopefully keep you informed of what's going on throughout the uh, campaign and into the next uh, legislative session, and uh, hopefully we'll be working with Doug Ducey uh, in that uh, endeavor. We will be having another one of these telephone town halls very soon, and this uh, next one uh, we're hoping to schedule for early October will be with Mark Burnovich, the new, uh, hopefully the new Attorney General for the state of Arizona come January. Uh, he is uh, a very uh, dynamic uh, young attorney who has been a federal prosecutor, head of the state uh, gaming department, and we'll be bringing him to you as an NFIB member through one of these telephone town halls in early October. Thank you all for participating, and hopefully we will have a very strong governor and a very strong attorney general come January, and with your help, we'll all make that happen. Thank you. <laughs>